Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to the beginning of week nine. As we reach the final week of our study on the civil rights movement, this week we're gonna make some final conclusions about the different organizations that we learned about and the different strategies they adopted to make change. Last week, you started to focus on one single organization, but now, you are going to make some final argumentative conclusions about which approach you believe was the most effective in the fight for equality and how we can use that approach in our fight for equality today. Last week, we had just been introduced to the Black Panther Party, and we're going to read more about this separate strand of the civil rights movement today. We're picking up on page 49 at the heading Black Panthers. Police violence against African Americans in cities grew with the threat of more riots. In response, Huey Newton and Bobby Seale organized the Black Panther Party for self-defense, later named the Black Panther Party, in California in 1966. Their beliefs were inspired by revolutions going on in Latin America and the growing militancy in the American Civil Rights Movement. They carried guns and were not afraid to defend themselves and others in the community. I'm gonna pause right here to take note of yesterday's headlines in the column. It says, in 1954, the United States became involved in a war that was taking place in the South Asian country of Vietnam. Thousands of American troops were sent to fight. As U.S. involvement increased, bitter divisions developed back home. Many Americans argued against the war, while others claimed the war should be fought to stop the spread of communism. Many people thought that the war drew attention away from the issues of poverty and the fight for civil rights in the United States. Picking back up on the bottom paragraph of page 49. The Black Panthers worked within poor African-American communities to educate residents about their legal rights. At the same time, they monitored the actions of the local police to prevent further violence. Many people, including teenagers, were dissatisfied with the lack of change in the cities and joined the Panthers. Steps continue. In 1967, Riots broke out in other cities across the United States, including Detroit, Michigan, Chicago, Illinois, Cincinnati, Ohio, and New York. Yet, even as the violence spread, peaceful victories were still taking place in the 1960s. In Cleveland, Ohio, Carl Stokes was voted the city's first African-American mayor. Richard Hatcher of Gary, Indiana, and Charles Evers of Fayetteville, Mississippi were also elected mayor. The NAACP's Thurgood Marshall was appointed to the U.S. Supreme Court, becoming the first African-American to hold a seat on the nation's highest court. I am a man. Sanitation workers in Memphis, Tennessee, wanted better treatment and higher wages. The workers went on strike with picket signs announcing, I am a man. When workers did not get what they wanted, King and the SCLC were called in to help. A march was organized, but it turned into a riot. Feeling defeated, King left Memphis, but he returned several weeks later. On April 3rd, 1968, he gave a speech at a large rally in Memphis to gain support for a new march. The next day, he was shot dead on the balcony of his room at the Lorraine Motel. The shock echoed around the world. Two months later, on June 5th, former Attorney General Robert Kennedy was also assassinated. At the time, he was campaigning to become president. The two deaths marked a tragic end to the era 
when the fight for civil rights for African Americans filled the streets, the newspapers, and the hearts of Americans. So, I'm going to take a minute to recognize this text feature, What Happened Where, which includes a map of the United States and key states in the civil rights movement and events that happened there. Starting with Watts, Los Angeles, California. A riot in Watts in 1965 set off a string of riots across the United States. Next, Jackson, Mississippi. The Freedom Riders are stopped in Jackson and arrested in 1961. New Orleans, Louisiana. The intended final destination of the Freedom Rides. Selma, Alabama, where Freedom Riders were attacked in 1961. Birmingham, Alabama, where Freedom Riders were attacked in 1961 and the police used fire hoses against demonstrators in 1963. Greensboro, North Carolina, where in 1960, Joseph McNeil, Franklin McCain, Azelle Blair, and David Richmond sat down at a lunch counter, setting off a string of sit-ins across the South. Washington, D.C., where Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his I Have a Dream speech during the March on Washington in 1963. Memphis, Tennessee, where Martin Luther King Jr. is shot at the Lorraine Motel in 1968 by James Earl Ray. And Little Rock, Arkansas, where in 1957, the Little Rock Nine, with the help of the NAACP, member Daisy Lee Gatson Bates, became the first African-American students to attend a white school in the South. The story continues. The ongoing quest for equality. The fight for civil rights continues to this day. Schools, businesses, and neighborhoods still struggle with the task of integration and achieving equality. Although many people believe that progress has not been made swift, has not been swift enough, progress has indeed been made. At one time in the United States, African Americans had no rights. They were the property of others. But with each passing generation, hard-won rights were obtained and exercised. The walls of segregation were slowly broken down. In the past, African Americans did not have the right to vote, and when they gained that right, they experienced discrimination at the polls. But since the 1960s, seven African Americans have run for President of the United States. None won until 2008, when Illinois Senator Barack Obama received almost 70 million votes and became the first African American President of the United States. African American civil rights are not only are not the only rights that have been called into question in the history of the United States. Efforts to gain rights for women took place throughout the 20th century and continue even today. The rights of immigrants and gay people are headline news on a nearly daily basis. Over the last several decades, important strides have been made in the treatment and rights of people with disabilities employment, housing, education, marriage, and military laws continue to change in order to better provide equality for all citizens.